Hello again. Welcome back to Wind Wash Art. So in my last video I made uh, a green flower with some purple in it, an homage to my brother and with his, his uh, wife. So I'm going to do the same colors because I want to show you a different technique for doing the same thing basically. So it just just to show you that you can use all kinds of different ways of doing things and get the, the basically the same result. So instead of putting um, the colors in one by one, I'm going to put everything into the cup first. So we're going to find the middle of the canvas again. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm pouring some paint into this cup. Now I pour onto the side of the cup. And again, I'm going to use the white as kind of a buffer for the colors. Oops, that one's not open yet. I'm going to change hands here for you so you can see it a little better. You don't need a lot of white. You just need a little bit just to create a bit of a buffer. That way you get less muddling of the colors. I already covered my canvas with my first layer, the base layer. And again, I used used paint. So used paint is just scrapings from the table after doing a paint pour. It's better than wasting all that paint. It is paint pouring. It's not paint by number. So you waste a lot of paint by pouring it off. So why not reuse as much as you can? So this is the color that it comes up as. It's, it's a type of gray. This is a bit of a darker gray, which is nice. So I don't know how this is coming out on the video for you with the lens of the camera, but hopefully it's in the shot. All kinds of different greens, just to make it fun. Now if I just put the cup down and poured the colors into it, they would mix. That's why I'm doing this at an angle and putting a bit of white in between the layers. And you can do that for a different effect. But in this one, I kind of want distinguished layers if possible. Again, there are people on the internet who know how much paint you're supposed to use per the size of your canvas. I just guesstimate. I go with whatever feels right. Sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Paint pouring is not an exact science. I 
I'll do some more. Just want to make sure I have enough to cover this canvas so when I spin it out it reaches all the corners since I don't have any square canvases on me. That's what we're going to use. Let's get these out of the way here. Isn't that pretty? Looks really pretty in there. Okay. And again, this white that I'm using is using Amsterdam brand paint with the Australian Floetrol. In hopes of getting some nice cell action. I'm just going to wipe that off real quick. I don't want to dry like that. Okay, let's do some pouring. There's already cell action in there. You can see it as it's pouring out. There's a lot of different cells and bubbles. That's neat. The colors sort of mix in a different fashion when you put them all together in a cup versus how I did it in the last video, one by one. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Put that there, let it drip out a little bit. Okay. Kitty Cat is here, so if you hear her walking around the plastic, don't worry about it. That's okay. So this is a bit more muddled than the other one was. Let's see what we can do here. It's not, certainly not as defined as the previous one was. This is called wrecking. I think it's quite a derogatory term, but that's what they call it. Okay, so I'm going to go from the middle out now. walking around. Okay. Use some flame here. Burst some of these bubbles and hopefully create some cells. It's a little off center, but we'll see how, how it spins out. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's tip it a bit. That's the cat jumping on things she shouldn't. Well, it's kind of pretty. So let's do, let's turn it the other way. Still need some more down there though. There we go, it's shifting a bit. You see this a bit of motion in that. That's where the most of the paint is. Let's see what we can do here, turning it the other way. Try something here. Push off a little bit there. So you can create a little more centrifugal force for that end. That's the prettiest end, though, I'll tell you. It's really pretty. So, put it back. So there's some cell action here, but not so much over there. It's pretty one sided painting, I'm afraid. bad. And if you look at it like that, so that is the top, that's the bottom. That's not so bad. Yeah, it's okay. But a little bit of negative space there. Negative space meaning you see the, the base color there, a little bit there. I think that's rather pretty actually. So let's do a little more flame, the heck of it. All right. I'll shock my hands a little bit. Okay. It's just the cat getting into things she shouldn't. Kitty cat! Kitty cat! Hey! Hey! Stop! 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 That's not your scratching post. Not too shabby. It's a lot different composition than the other flower I made in the last video. And that's that's perfectly fine. You're never going to get the same exact thing twice. So I think that came out rather well. It's a, a lovely composition, even though it's different from the other one. So there's another way of doing the same kind of thing, same uh, colors, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.